Welcome to the Now or Never show. I am your host, Kimberly Trapani, and I have been so excited to introduce this person that is has a special story. Welcome, Jay Holland. Hey, man, I like to say, man, all praise to God the Most High for allowing us another 24 hours on this, on this precious earth of his. Are you enjoying your Memorial Day weekend so far? Oh, yeah, man. I, uh, I'm not being able to eat barbecue like I normally would do. I ate some ve- we ate some vegan hamburgers, but, you know, hey, I'm grateful for that. Can you tell me, we talked last time about your story a little bit, and I want to just get into, we talked last time about your movies. Can you tell oh, me yes, what's going on? Oh man, just working on new movies, uh, new events, man. We got uh, some tours going on with, with the rap artists that I've been dealing with. Met a gospel artist today, so I'm like a, a couple of singers. So I'm really I'm trying to be more diverse with the music. Absolutely and definitely. And as much as I can appreciate rap, I really have a special place in my heart, as you know, for Jesus Christ and in gospel. Who inspires you? That is a gospel singer uh i'm i'm uh this is gonna kind of go this is gonna go james cleveland he's an old he's an old singer man and i, I loved his music and uh bb and cc wines I, I love their music because it helps helps keep me more in tune with god and then i'm gonna tell you another person that's gonna really catch you catch probably catch you off guard tupac rapped about god a lot and you know, people never talked about those songs they only talked about the other songs he made but he actually has a song called Who Do You Believe In? He said, I'm gonna keep my faith in God. And that was the name of the, the name of the song was Who Do You Believe In? As, absolutely and definitely. And I although I never got to meet Tupac, I dealt with the Harry O people, as you know. Yeah. Let's get into your movies a little bit. What kind of genre are the movies? Uh, are they the movies? Well, we got one. I, I, it's it's kind of hood. It was a hood story. You know, that was just one to kind of get their attention because, you know, they love to see the hood type stuff. You know, most most of the people out there, then it was a little adventure, a little action. Then the next movie we did is inspirational. It's like a hood movie, but more inspirational with a strong message in it. And uh, it's called Another Chance. And then that one, uh, the message is basically like, you know, showing how a guy and an old guy from the neighborhood was spiritually connected. And the old guy was, you know, like always looking out for him. And then, you know, I got to let, you know, I got to let people see the movie to get the rest. But when they watch that movie, it's going to touch them because it's very spiritually orientated. What was your role in Another Chance? I was playing an old man named Mr. Tracy, who uh, who had an addiction of eating Fuel City tacos. That's so funny. <laughs> 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 How yeah. are you feeling, Jay, since the last time we talked? Man, I, I mean, I'm not going to complain because I feel like deep down inside, if I whine about it, God going to look down on me and say, hey, man, do you want some cheese crackers and a cup to go with all that wine? Absolutely. And I can enjoy a glass of wine, but some people <laughs> <don't> know. <laughs> some I know people that's right. In moderation. And uh, no, I'm going to <laughs> man. <laughs> oh we, man. We talked about all the setbacks you had in life and I don't want to rehash that, but can you tell me about how life's disappointments, how you can stay positive and motivated because sometimes I don't feel so good and I I'm not always positive and motivated even as a host of a the Now or Never show. Well, first and foremost, man, you you know, you're a, you're a beacon of light. When I see you, you're always glowing, you know, and uh, I mean, you got to use that light because in the midst of the darkness, you have to turn to the light. The only enemy of darkness is light. And the only way that darkness can be beaten is with light. And you have a glow about you. Your aura shines bright, just like a big old stoplight. I mean, it's just like, man, just it's glowing. You have a glow about you. So I always go to your light. And it's your darkest hour. It's a song. You ever heard a song called How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees? 
Yes, absolutely. I grew up with the Bee Gees and and and, and the staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, in, in that song there, that uh, "How Deep Is Your Love," they have a verse. Did it help me when I was in the hospital? When I was in a, when I was coming out that coma, and I was fighting hard to get my health back. It was a verse on there. It's the second verse in that song. When he say he starts the song off, he says, "I believe in you." He said, "You know the doors to my very soul. You're my light in my deepest darkest hours. You're my savior whenever I fall." Those words changed my life. You are, have inspired me with your story in the past, and you, you, you can talk. I heard you on a radio show recently talking about how we're all human. Can you talk to me about humanism? Uh, yes, man. Just ask me whatever question you want to know about humanism. I'm gonna give you the best definition I can give. The issue with humanism is we are in a different world than before it's but when i grew up it was yes ma'am no ma'am please and thank you and and respecting our elders now the new cool seems to be to be rude to people and slam the door in their face can you talk to me about a little bit about what's going on with humanism and where god plays in that Okay, because uh, it, it was spoken in a word. They were saying in the end of days that uh, it was gonna be it was gonna be very scarce to get the word of God. And seeing that we just need more of us who are in the word of God to speak up more. That's why I'm making sure I'm doing my part. You'll never see me post anything negative. I might even post something in a joking manner, but I never post anything negative. See these people. See negative has become the new positive to them. And uh, and it's like I heard a guy say one time. He said, "Hey, OG," he said, "I don't care." If it's good press, good press or bad press, he say press is press. I say I beg to differ. I say I disagree, young man. I say because just think about it, everything you're doing now is negative. When you get older, and do you want to be remembered for negativity or would you like to be remembered for some positive? So think about it. Most of the bad people on that did some bad in life, uh, they remembered in a bad light. You don't want to be remembered in a bad light. You want to be remembered in a good light. Absolutely. And you mentioned uh, about negativity and we have so much narcissism in our social media today. But when you and I grew up, Jay, we didn't have cell phones. No, none of that. No Internet, no cell phones. We was outside riding bikes and we was playing basketball and, and, and stuff like that in the neighborhoods. And you was going to church. See, now kids, don't. I, I mentioned church to. Younger generation, they said they don't, even my kids, man. I said, hey, y'all want to go to church? Nah, I don't want to go to church. And um, and I think church, it, it was uh, it was forced upon me. And I thank God that she forced it on me because I wouldn't have had no balance. I wouldn't have had any balance at all. Absolutely. And you're a God-loving man. Talk to me about how, what motivates the youth to stay focused and learn their physics in elementary school, but also the balance with being a child? Uh, my opinion on that is like a lot of these kids, man, uh, it starts in the home because the influence at school, they're going to have that. You're going to have good and bad influences at school. That's why we need more good teachers. They need to pay these teachers more money because I've seen a, a thing the other day where teachers have to have a fight with a student. I remember those days, that was uncalled for. We, I never remember nobody attacking a, a teacher when I was in school. I seen some, they disagreed, but I never seen anybody physically fight a teacher. Absolutely, and a lot of stuff going on. There was a child that went missing that turned into a homicide near me. And most recently, last week, there was uh, a shooting where the assassin just uh, basically started shooting on officers so that they he ended up deceased. Uh, he didn't make it through the hospital through uh, when the police shot at him. What's going on biblically with what God is telling us? Where, in your opinion... Are we in revelations? Uh, do you uh, know yeah, we, 
Yeah, we definitely revelations because everything that uh, was spoken in the word is coming to pass. Uh, just like they were saying that uh, mothers would be against daughters, fathers against sons. You see a lot of that. They would say men would be loving men and women would be loving women publicly, you know, just out in the open. And I remember growing up and no disrespect to anyone who, you know, whatever their, uh, their preference is, if they're, you know, if they're, uh, you know, they, they sexuality, you know, it matters not to me. I judge a person by them, not by their sexuality. But, uh, you know, it was just spoken in a word that, you know, all that would be, you know, forefront, you know, and um, and you see it, you see it firsthand now, you know, I mean, kids 10 and nine years old saying that they, you know, that, that they, you know, that they're homosexuals, you know, and I feel like, I mean, whatever person chooses, that's their preference, you know, but just know that it's a God that sits high and looks low, so I don't encourage anybody to press that on no kid. Let these kids grow up, and if they choose to do something with by the time they're 18, then that's their business. But until then, I, I feel like the influence is coming from television. We can't let that influence get them. That's why we have to have parents to kind of, you remember they used to have that thing called PG, parental suggestions is uh, is, uh, uh, is guidance. You know, you parental guidance when you look at this because it shouldn't be watched by a kid, shouldn't be watching it by themselves. Absolutely. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back with Jay, we're going to dive a little deeper into Jay's projects and what he wants to tell the world. Trumpeline is an organic genre full length feature film, including two characters that have no sense of reality in the time of fear. Trumpeline addresses relationship building it's a spin-off of SNL to make light of a time where relationship differences are clear and evident. When the Schenectady police were called during the making of Trump Align, my nerves were like a train wreck on rails with no conductor. I appreciate Officer Irwin and Donovan for making my one take happen for the making of Trump Align. The Trump Align scenes were shot in upstate New York. The distribution plan is T25CL Entertainment. To rent Trump Align, please visit www.t25cl.com Go to the Movies tab and click on Trump Align. You can view the film as many times as you want in 48 hours on the T25CL Entertainment platform. <laughs> We're back on the Now or Never show, and I am your host, Kimberly Trapani. And Jay is so amazing to give his time to the show. Jay, can you tell me, are we putting too much pressure on Americans? Well, I mean, they say pressure bumps pipes, but they also say the pressure makes diamonds. So, I mean, when pressure's been applied, one of the two is going to happen. It's either going to bust some pipes or it's going to make some diamonds. Absolutely. And let's talk a little bit about your movies. Uh, are they funny? Or are they for adult audiences? Tell me about uh, that. It's mainly a duck, but that, uh, that, that another chance that could kind of go either or. I think it could be uh, enjoyed by a family because uh, we have like little funny, funny moments in the movie as well. But it's, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of series that get deep. The movie gets real deep. And how are we going to see those films? Uh, you can go on Tubi or you can go on YouTube. Absolutely. And exciting stuff. And can you repeat those titles for us? Okay. One of them is Jack Boys. It's, you know, Jack, like Jack and the Beanstalk. And then you have B-O-I-Z instead of B-O-Y-Z. Great. And are you going to, at some point, lead the way on a movie? Are you going to produce 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much, even though I be acting in these movies, I do my part behind the scenes also with the co-directing. Oh, that's awesome. It's exciting to see what you create go from start to finish. Man, it definitely is. Like, I didn't think that uh, that first movie was going It's over a, a million one right now in views. Oh, fabulous. That's so exciting. And going on Tubi and going on YouTube channel, it's very exciting to see. And we definitely want you Jay's movies to be checked out. And I will be checking them out as well. What's your most favorite hobby, Jay? You know what, man? This might sound crazy. My favorite hobby is watching Westerns. I like watching old black and white Westerns. Uh, like Gunsmoke and Rifleman and Wagon Train. And I love that stuff. Yeah, I absolutely love All Quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I learned that one in film school in my Man. graduate years of college. Can you talk to me about what uh, you want to do in the next next year or two that you haven't done for projects? Uh, you talking about for music or uh, movies or just in general? In general, what what uh, would you like to do that you haven't been able to get a chance to with all of the adversity you've had to face in in your life? Okay, well, one of them is a pledge that I just made uh, at church a, a few Sundays ago that I'm gonna personally, along with uh, whoever volunteers with me, we're gonna feed five thousand homeless people. I'm talking. That's my goal. I'm talking about every time I come in, I'm going to sponsor the food and everything. I just need somebody to cook it or help me prepare it. And I'm going to hand out, I'm going to personally feed 5,000 people. Uh, we're going to, I just talked to my pastor, we're going to have at the church where the people can have a P.O. box. See, some people can't even get mail. So we're going to put a P.O. box at the church where these people can have a, a, a center where they can receive their mail. Some people have money. And, and can't get a check to get help because they don't have an address, a stable address. We're going to give them a stable address. We're going to have a warming, and, uh, warming center put on the side of the church. Uh, it was a wing that we named after my mom, her sister, my other, and my other auntie. It's called a Three Sisters Hall. We're not only going to feed the homeless there, but we're also going to uh, have clothing for them, a spot where they can wash up, use the bathroom. They can be warm instead of people dying in the zero-degree weather. They can come warm up. And this is in Texas where? Yes, ma'am. Dallas, Texas. In Dallas. Yep, in the 752150 uh, zip code. That is so amazing. You are doing fabulous work. And I see your posts and you're just so motivating. And when I'm down, I can just look at Jay Holland and no, Jay Holland loves God and is doing amazing work. What kind of motivational speaking are you doing now? Okay, well, it's basically uh, me and my me and my brother. We were just out doing it uh, doing it today, and uh, and it's crazy how we we went up there and we was talking. We ended up meeting another guy who's he was like, man, and he said, man, it touched me how y'all was talking about God. And then this other young lady, my brother started like talking with her. Ended up she ended up crying. And he, he was hugging her. And a matter of fact, as I'm speaking about my brother, I want him to just speak a couple of quick words. Even though I know this is my segment, but I'm just showing you, man, you know, it's, it's all about God. So I want him to give y'all a quick uh, word, of, uh, word of advice. Hold on one second. Hello, I'm Kevin. Hello, how are you doing? What's your how name? How are you? I'm Cordero. Nice to meet you, Cordero. Nice to meet you as well, Kimberly. You, you're in the seat with someone that is so amazing, Jay Holland. Yeah, so that's, that's my, uh, my powerful brother there. And uh, me and him met in, at an event again. And one, one key tool I always share with people is power and showing up. I showed up for someone else to support them. Me and Jay met, and we were so in tune uh, spiritually and about God. And I shared with him my gift as a prophecy, uh, a person who prophesies and sees in the spiritual realm. My gift came from God, so I shared a few things with him, and we've been we've been in tune ever since. Because every one thing about God that I love, if you move in the right direction, He'll allow you to make the right connection. But you have to be able to move forward and not backwards. So um, today, for example, what He was sharing with you was 
uh, he spoke and shared the table with me. And this is what I tell people too. In the kingdom, there's no competition, only teamwork. Once we learn how to work as a team, you will always accomplish the dream. And when I saw this lady there, I shared a, a quick story with her. And I looked at her. I said, uh, you are important. I said, this is your season. And always remember this. This is not the season to be selfish, but you can't leave you out. So I always say with this, I'll add to this and I'm done. I said, always consider you because if you don't take care of you first, you can't help anyone else because we all need help. But we have to understand the importance. If God give us the power, let us know how to be able to sustain and obtain. And this is the, the importance to learn to be an obtainer and not a complainer. If we ask God for something, are we going to be responsible to take care of? That's all I'm going to say. That's my little piece. I thank you for your time and we'll keep moving forward. <laughs> Absolutely. And definitely mentions retracting and not going forward. A lot of us feel stuck when yeah. we feel like we're going backwards and we're not going forwards. Can you give some words of advice on that, Jay? Okay. Well, basically, I mean, you got to think about it. So I'm going to use positive and negative. See, positive movement is going to keep you going forward. It's going to add to Negative movement is going to subtract and take away from. If you're steady moving in your positive, you don't have time to deal with the negative. And the negative can't steal from your positive unless you're allowed into your comfort zone to steal from your positive and put it in the negative. So you have to always stay moving in a positive manner so that you can continue to move forward. Absolutely and definitely. Anything else you want to tell us on your projects, Jay? Uh, just look for future projects. Uh, I got one. This is my first time speaking on this publicly, but I'm going to do a segment. You remember how the Twilight Zone was? Yes. How the Twilight Zone had a lot of lessons in it. I was watching some old Twilight Zones, and this, this one, this idea was given to me by God. I'm going to have a series where basically I'm going to have actors, and I want to start because everybody loves drama. They love the negative. People like they gravitate to the negative. So I'm going to start the stuff off where it's like, it's, you know, you see somebody getting shot or hit by a car. and they Oh, my goodness. It got their attention. Then all of a sudden, we're going to pause and you hear the voice like Rod Sterling. This is so-and-so, so-and-so. 25 years old, da-da-da-da-da. Then we're going to rewind everything. You know, make the little noise and rewind it back to the beginning. And we're going to give him a chance to make it right. Absolutely. And you meant mentioned the Bee Gees earlier. What's your favorite Bee Gees song? Man, How Deep Is Your Love? Then, uh, then I like all the uh, More Than a Woman is my next one. <laughs> then I love one by the brother, you know, their brother, Andy Gill. Yes. You remember Andy? Oh, man. Andy had one of uh, I Want to Be Your Everything. Well, I'll pretend that I don't know who we had to get this because ah. I'm not myself. <laughs> <laughs> the Andy man say Andy was the white version of Michael Jackson. He was a pop star. Absolutely and definitely. And what messages do you want to spread to the world today before we wrap? Man, the message I want to spread to the world is, you know, I know it's hard for a lot of people to remember uh, biblical verses, you know, but I want y'all to remember this right here. The golden rule, y'all, if you do unto others as you would want others to do unto you, this world will be a better place. Because if you don't want to get mistreated, why mistreat somebody? And we have to want for our brothers and sisters and we want for ourselves. And if we don't want nothing for ourselves, then we possibly can't want nothing for our brothers and sisters. Absolutely. And that's good advice, Jay. And how would one contact you? Uh, you can contact me. Uh, you can call any near payphone. I'm going to be right by the payphone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, y'all can, <laughs> now y'all can, uh, y'all can contact me on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Facebook is under J Holland, J A Y H O L L A N D. And then also on Instagram it's under real O G J Holland. Awesome. Thank you so much on a holiday weekend. And I don't want to keep you another second. Actually, I want to keep you for another a book series and film in the future. But you and I will be touched offline. <laughs> <laughs> I, happy Memorial Weekend. There's so many people that fought for our country. And I'm so proud of you for getting feeding the homeless. It's amazing. Thank you so much much man I'm, I'm just being a service as god want me with uh want me to be and allow me to be 
And I want to salute all our veterans. I salute y'all. Absolutely. And thank you. And lovely to meet your brother and be safe. And you reach out to me anytime you have a message you want to send on the Now or Never show. And, and I'll bring you back on. Okay. I'll be more than happy to come back on. And I'm going to start bringing a few guests with me. God bless you. God bless you too, sister.